In 1956, at the edge of the jungle in Ecuador, five-year-old Steve Saint watched his father Nate take off in his yellow Piper airplane and fly deep into the surrounding rainforest. Nate, along with fellow missionaries Jim Elliott, Roger Udarian, Ed McCulley, and Pete Fleming were attempting to reach the Waldani, a Stone Age tribe of savage Indians who were known for killing anyone that entered their territory. It was only through the use of modern technology that the men were eventually able to establish peaceful contact with the Indians. After weeks of effort, the five missionaries finally met face to face with the violent tribe. However, years of hatred and distrust of outsiders would turn the encounter deadly. Two days after their first and only peaceful meeting, all five men were brutally speared to death and Nate's airplane was torn to pieces. Soon after, Rachel Saint and Elizabeth Elliot, sister and wife to the slain men, went in to live with the tribe. Within two years, the killings had virtually ceased. At age 13, Steve Saint was baptized in the very river where his father was killed, by the very same men who had done the killing. In 1994, Steve, having become a successful businessman with a wife and four children, traveled to Ecuador to meet with the Waldani, whom he now considered family. The tribe, having become increasingly dependent on Western missionaries for help and aid, wanted to learn how to become more self-sufficient. They asked Steve if he would teach them himself. Out of that initial request for help, the concept for iTech was born. When the Waurani asked me to help them, I wanted to say no, because I couldn't imagine what I could do for them that more capable missionaries hadn't already done. But Dawa, who's my tribal grandmother, scolded me and said they weren't asking me to be a missionary to them. They wanted me to live with them as family, to help protect them from outsiders who they saw were dominating more and more of their lives. What they wanted me to teach them was the medicine thing, as they called it, and the tooth thing and the airplane thing. But when I pointed out that all of these things were already available through missionaries in the area, they quickly responded that all the missionaries lived in other places and weren't always available when there was a need. Then as I explained to them that there weren't enough missionaries to provide all of these services to them in the way that they wanted, I realized finally what they were really asking. They wanted me to teach them to do the things that missionaries had been doing for them for years so that they wouldn't be completely dependent on outsiders and so that they could take care of their own people's needs. ITEC, the Indigenous Peoples Technology and Education Center, was started to help train indigenous believers to become meaningful participants in the Great Commission. When you give a man a fish, you feed him for only a day and you make him dependent upon you for food. The heart of iTech is not simply to give, but to train men to fish and thereby feed them for a lifetime. During one visit to a Waurani village, I noticed that their nice church building needed maintenance. When I asked several of the men why they didn't fix it, they said to me, God's house, who does it belong to? We don't know. The Waurani weren't fixing the church because they thought that they needed permission. They hadn't built it, they hadn't paid for it, so they reasonably concluded it wasn't theirs. I began to understand their dilemma. See, when well-meaning Christians with good intentions decided to help the Waurani by building them a nice church building, the message that the Waurani heard was that the church buildings that they knew how to build, with split bamboo floors and thatched roofs, weren't acceptable, so they quit. They concluded that only foreigners were able to build proper God's houses. So, foreigners should build all of them. The Waurani reasoned that when outsiders decided that they needed more God's houses, they, the outsiders, would come and build more. Missionary efforts in the 20th century have had an incredible impact on the world. But many of those good-natured endeavors have hindered the ability of the indigenous church 
to share the joy of Jesus Christ with its own people. It is our greatest desire at ITech not to make indigenous believers dependent on Western help and aid, as the Waldani were at one point, but to empower them to become self-propagating, self-governing, and self-supporting. In its efforts to win the world for God, Christianity has often made spectators out of the very people it sought to reach. It is our goal to bring those indigenous believers out of the stands and onto the playing field of the Great Commission. A dentist came to me and asked if I would fly him in to see the Waurani so that he could fix their teeth. I agreed, but only on condition that he was willing to train them to do what he was doing. It turned out, however, that his idea of training was to let them hold his instruments while he did the work. But when I stopped by later to see how things were going, the dentist said to me, hey, I thought you told me that nobody here knows how to drill teeth. And I said, they don't. I've known these people all my life and all they know how to do is to pull teeth. But he interrupted me and said, wait a minute, I've been a dentist for 20 years and somebody here knows how to drill teeth. I took a break to get some lemonade earlier and when I came back, this girl, and he pointed to one of the young ladies, her teeth had been drilled by somebody who knew what they were doing. And when I asked around, Tamenta, one of the Christian elders, had a sheepish grin on his face. So I asked him if he had done it. He told me, I saw that the doctoro had already given her the shot, so I thought, what could it hurt? So I did it. Tementa, a Waudeni friend with no formal education, had actually learned how to drill a tooth simply by watching somebody else do it. Just because indigenous people are low tech doesn't mean that they're low IQ. They can learn how to do these things. They just need the right training and the right tools to do it. Just as Steve's father used an airplane and a radio to take the gospel to the Waldani, so too can indigenous believers use modern technology to take the good news to their own people. However, the enormous cost and complexity of such technology makes it a nearly impossible option for the indigenous church. In order for them to meet the spiritual and physical needs of their own people, the tools need to be reinvented to be more portable, maintainable, and affordable. ITech seeks to take complicated tools and methods and reinvent them for uncomplicated people, placing indigenous believers on the front line of world missions. We want to reinvent things like transportation, communication, and healthcare for indigenous people. Travel by air, travel by boat or trail, medicine, dental care, optometry, community health programs, sanitation, and even computer use. All those things that missionaries typically do for indigenous people. We want to train them to be the dentists and the doctors and the midwives and educators and farmers and mechanics and pilots and anything else that will help them carry out Christ's Great Commission. And then we want to teach them to teach others to do it too. Missions is like running a relay race. In areas where there are no churches or airplanes or radios or dentists, missionaries and groups like ITEC have to run the first lap. But then we should hand off the baton to local believers. We should teach them to fly and show them how to drill teeth and teach them how to make disciples and build churches. Then it won't be missions trying to finish the race for them, but it'll be indigenous believers themselves who will cross the finish line.